Just to, to explain to, to your, your viewers and listeners, um, you know, the, what Supernode is, it's a, it's a new uh, cable system uh, that's going to allow the supergrid to be built um, and to both capture and distribute and transmit the the 900,000 megawatts that's going to have to be uh, built offshore in Europe because that's where the real resource is. And also to link up, uh, again, for what we said previously, with the with the great southern resource around the Mediterranean. Um, so that's that's what uh, Supernode is doing. And we're doing it using um, superconductivity, which is... At certain materials, when the, when you reduce them below a critical temperature, they stop uh, conduct. There is there's no resistance whatsoever, and and we've had a look at that. Um, and, and you can't actually decarbonize without supergrid, and actually you can't decarbonize and you can't build a supergrid without superconductivity because there isn't enough copper. If you were trying to build this in 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 conventional high voltage DC. Um, you, there isn't enough copper, and I'm not so sure that even it, with with opening copper mines, you would have enough. And we are the actual replacement for that. One ton of yttrium, which we use to, to it's a, a rare earth. One ton of yttrium is the equivalent of thirty thousand tons of copper. Now, but but that's so thin that it has to be supported. So it comes down to one to three hundred. If you take the other materials that are present in the tape in the superconducting tape, it's still one three hundred. Uh, the weight of what you have in copper, so so we're on to a winner here. Um, in in turn, uh, and the and the big the uh, to answer your question directly, the two big challenges are one is the technology. Can we get the heat transfer low enough from the environment into the, where this superconducting cable is, and and that's what we're working on now. Uh, but the other one is to uh, get the policy environment writ large in Europe. So that they're not going around talking about the great, huge imposition on the body intellectual of carbon capture and storage. This nonsense has been going on for 25 years now, and it's never going to amount to anything. And then the latest, of course, the hydrogen economy. And nobody has pointed out that if you, I mean, if you, how do you burn metal? Well, you take a feed of oxygen, a feed of hydrogen, bring them together and burn it. Now, you want to get the hydrogen back out of the water that's that's created by this. You have to put at least the same energy back in. That means that you're always going to have, you'll only get out 70%. If you put in 100 megawatt hours, you're going to get out 70 megawatt hours. And that's before you start burning it. And once you start burning it, the laws of conventional thermodynamics come along. And so you're into, you know, car no efficiencies and all that stuff that we learned in university. Um, so hydrogen is not your solution here. But the oil and gas industry sold Europe uh, when we were all locked down uh, two years ago. They descended on Europe and now they're going to spend 550 billion on the hydrogen economy in Europe. Now, you need the 70 million tons of hydrogen that need to be generated from water every year to replace what's exactly there uh, as used as a feedstock. But to talk about uh, hydrogen cars as comp as compared with electric cars just doesn't add up. There is it's just nothing competes with electricity for most applications. And I'd imagine that hydrogen will play some role. Um, but I definitely would agree with that. There's been quite a bit of fanfare almost promoting it as somewhat of a silver bullet uh, solution. And a concern that I'd always have with Anthony that's promoted as a silver bullet solution is that it takes attention away from uh, a lot of the other very viable solutions. Um, I'm just really interested to know. What's the size of the conductor um, used for? Well, we have a one tenth. Uh, one tenth is about it's about that uh, thick. Uh, we we built that already, and and we demonstrate. We have we've we're buying lots of machinery now to test out our various insulation methods and and a vacuum. Drawing vacuums is very important here because you know the, a vacuum is the most perfect way of insulating. But then vacuums are they're hard things to deal with because um, various. Molecules like air, uh, particularly hydrogen, but also oxygen, diffuse in through the walls. And so the vacuum gets filled up eventually if you put in a real hard vacuum. So that's not an option open to you uh, if you want this thing to last for 30 years or 40 years. Um, it, but it's, it's great fun. I mean, we've, we've, it's going to take us 60 million to, to, to get the prototype up and running at, at technology readiness level six by 2025. And by 2029, then we should have a saleable product that will just transform the grid. Um, 
And and we, we need to convince Europe that this is necessary. Uh, one of their own reports in one of their research findings said it was, but there's a big difference between that and then becoming a directive. 